Doksasi kirie, doksasi. Please be seated. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the lines from this particular gospel passage troubles many people when they hear it. When they hear Jesus Christ cry from the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They wonder, how is it that A, Jesus Christ is crying out to God that he has been forsaken, and B, how is it possible that God the Father forsook His Son. To understand this, we need to understand the context of how the Jews wrote down Psalms. For in all likelihood, Jesus Christ did not just recite the first line of this Psalm, that is Psalm 21, sometimes numbered as 22, but would have recited the entire psalm. The psalm begins, O God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is necessary. It is necessary for God the Father to forsake His Son for the briefest of seconds in order to allow His Son to die. In that brief second, Jesus Christ is totally alone. If you read the psalm, which I encourage you to do, you will see how Jesus Christ talks about how he is surrounded by enemies, by dogs, lions, unicorns, how they are casting lots for his garments, how he is lifted up. It is remarkable when you read this psalm because it tells the story of the passion completely. But what people don't understand is although the psalm begins with, O God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It ends with victory. It ends with the author being answered by God the Father and that he will be comforted and shown to be the one who prevails over all those who mock him, who pierce his side. It is a powerful statement that Jesus Christ is showing on the cross, letting us know that this is what has happened. The problem is, despite the fact that the Pharisees are well-versed in Scripture, they do not understand the parallel. And further, beyond just scriptural obstinacy, refusing to look at what is happening, prophesied about clearly in this psalm, a psalm that was well known to everyone because this psalm was taught by Jewish mothers to their children when they were scared, that when they were afraid, they were to recite this psalm, knowing that God will not forsake them, that God will rescue them. Everyone knew this psalm. But even beyond this, if we look at the text, and this is corroborated by Jewish scholars and Roman scholars, scientists from all over the region telling us that from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, darkness covered the land. In other words, what they were experiencing was a total solar eclipse. A few years ago, many people in America traveled hours so that they could experience such a phenomenon in which, in the middle of the day, everything would become dark like night as the moon perfectly aligned to cover the sun's light 
making it seem like it is darkness. And while the process of a solar eclipse can take hours, that moment of absolute darkness only lasts a couple of minutes. The earth was full of darkness from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, meaning that this was an eclipse a point that should have lasted five minutes lasted three hours, the three hours that Jesus was on the cross. Do you understand what that means? Two things. One, as another person pointed out to me, although I have not corroborated it, is that it should have been physically impossible for there to be such an eclipse at that time because according to records, the moon was on the other side of the planet at that time. But even further, even if the moon was slated to be there, that means that it stopped. If you understand anything about cosmic bodies, you will understand that although time seems to move slowly for us, we are moving at light speed. The speed of the planets circling the speed of the planets orbiting, the moon orbiting, and the sun speeding through the universe. It's all going very, very fast. And for that to stop, perhaps you've ever been in a car that suddenly stopped suddenly, you lurch. You're very aware when something very fast suddenly stops. And yet the entire world didn't realize it, didn't understand it, only saw the simplest symptoms that there was darkness, not recognizing what that truly meant. And so these people yelling at him, get off the cross and we'll believe you. You're the son of God. If God loves you, let him rescue him. Are not paying attention that the entire universe is stopping jaw agape at this moment of God hanging on the tree. The creator of all the universe has humiliated himself to this degree to be strung up and killed by his very creation. The sun hides its rays. The moon is afraid because this cannot be. And for this reason, the earth quakes and shakes, and the temple curtain is ripped in two. Such is the significance of this moment, a moment that is completely lost. So when we read, Eli, Eli, lava savak bani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us look deeply into what that psalm is telling us. And let us look to how great is the condescension of our God that even the universe stopped to hide its eyes and take stock of this moment for our salvation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.